Welcome to the Life Unlimited Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice so you can confidently live your life your way for life. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Hello and welcome to another Life Unlimited podcast with your host, Larry Heller. Today, Craig Smith is our guest. He received his insurance license in 2013, really driven by the challenges that his friends and family faced navigating the Medicare maze. Now, he is absolutely dedicated to the senior marketplace nationwide and specializes in assisting baby boomers with their health care and insurance financial needs. With a commitment to unbiased guidance, Craig takes pride in tailoring comprehensive and affordable plans to cap potentially catastrophic medical costs for retirees and those approaching the age of 65. Larry, take it away. Great. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Craig, for being here today. I know my audience is going to be excited to listen to this because everyone that gets close to needing Medicare starts asking us questions. So why not go to the Medicare expert like yourself? So uh, so thanks so much again for joining us, Craig. So let's kind of start really at the beginning. Um, so what is what is M Medicare? Um, just break break it down in you know the different parts for our audience. Yeah, well, it, it's a federally insured program by the government, and it's typically for people that are 65 or older, or people that have certain mental conditions like end stage renal failure or, or things along that line. And it's got different parts. It's got part A, which is for hospitalization. Part B is for your doctors. And that is what the government gives you. But then of course you need a drug plan and all the other items that you hear so often on television and radio and emails and inboxes that, that you have to look at and see if you need it or don't. Right, so part A and part B that the government takes care of. And then the drug plan is what you really need to really need to take care of. And we're gonna get into it. A lot of changes going on in that in that world. So, uh, so why don't we talk about eligibility and like who, you know, who is eligible for, for Medicare? So anybody who's turning 65 is eligible for Medicare or someone who has some end stage renal failure, as I said, is, is entitled to it. Or even somebody that's been collecting social security for 25 months, uh, social security disability, I should say, they can qualify for under 65. But people who, just because you're turning 65, that seems like the magic age that people start to look at it. Not everybody needs to sign up for it. Mm -hmm. it depends if you've got coverage from your job, maybe a significant other covers you. So not everybody has to sign up. And it's important because part A is free. Part B, the government charges you for. And depending on your income, it, it's a lot of money. And you may not need it. So it's always good to check and see if it's really something you need to, to enroll in. Right. So let's unpack that a little bit. So so I know, so like you mentioned, if, if you're working for a company, you may or may not um, have to go on Medicare. I think it's it a national or maybe a state uh, limit, but there are a certain amount of employees where you, even if you're working, you still have to go on Medicare. Uh, why don't you expand on that? Let everyone know what that was, what that number is. Yeah, I mean, it's national, so it's not state by state. Otherwise, it would be a complete disaster if every state had to enforce their own rules. So if you work for a company that has 20 or more employees, then your employer health insurance would be primary and Medicare would be secondary. So that's the reason why you may not need to sign up for Part B because you have health insurance or what they call creditable health insurance from your employer. And you, most people sign up for part A anyways, because it's free. So, you know, government doesn't give us much for free, but we'll, we'll take it. Um, and then the part B is where they charge you for, and you don't really need to until the coverage that you have from the job is going to end. But what about if the coverage from the job you're paying for? So it could be, is that more expensive than Medicare? So even if you work for a company with more than 20 employees, would you still want to look into the possibility of making Medicare your primary or are you not allowed to? No, you can. I mean, that is definitely a great point. It's a conversation I have with a lot of people. You know, what are the benefits of your plan and what are you paying? And then we can look at Medicare plans and compare the two. If the Medicare plan is better for you, and it's financially worth it, and it's meeting your health needs, 
it's something to explore. If the company plan is better and giving you more benefits, even though it may be more money, but you're getting more benefits, that might be the option to stay with. Right. And then if you're covered, if your spouse is, let's say, younger and you're covered under your spouse's plan, do you still need to uh, apply for Medicare? No. If it's under your plan, your spouse, your significant other, your partner, whomever it is. But one thing that I always like to point out, if the person turning 65 is the one who has the insurance and their significant other is on the plan with them, Sometimes if you drop your employer coverage, that might impact your significant other. So you really have to weigh the pros and cons and what additional coverage your significant other would be able to get. Because sometimes when you drop the plan, everybody on that family plan with you is done. Right. So you could possibly go if, it, if it's close in age, they could maybe go to COBRA as an option if Medicare right. made sense. So uh, so all all great, all great points. Uh, so okay. let's just think about it. a lot of people think they turn 65 and they're automatically going to be enrolled in, in Medicare. Is that true? If you're collecting social security, yes, you will be. They will okay. automatically do that for you. You don't really have to do anything, but if you're not collecting social security, it, it, you know, it may not be the right choice at the current time, as long as you've got, like we said, coverage from the employer, which is, which is key. If you work for a company that has less than 20 employees, then you have to sign up for Part A and Part B, because when you work for an entity that's less than 20 employees, Medicare is your primary, and the health insurance from the employee would be secondary. So if you work for a small company that's got 10, 12 people, then you have to sign up for Medicare Part A and Part B. And what happens if you forget or you don't sign up for, for Medicare when you turn 65? Uncle Sam will penalize you, and the penalty is there for life. Uh, it doesn't doesn't go away. But you know, there's a big window because you can enroll in Medicare three months before your 65th birthday, the month of, and three months after. So you got a seven month window there, and it's only I, I when people say I forgot, you know, you you're inundated with stuff in the mail and television and and things along that line, even Social Security brings it to your attention. But if you don't sign up for Medicare Part A or Part B, and you don't enroll in a drug plan, you're going to be penalized and that penalty is there for life. So so let's even take that one step further. So now you, you're receiving Social Security. So like you mentioned before, you're automatically enrolled in Medicare, but you're not enrolled in the drug plan of Medicare. Correct? Right. Sometimes they will automatically just put you in a drug plan to avoid a penalty, but they're not sitting and saying, you know, okay, Larry, what medications do you take? What doses do you take? So they're not necessarily putting you into the plan that really meets your needs. They may be doing it so you avoid a penalty, but that's why it's always good to speak to a professional because there are so many different plans out there. And most people, their biggest complaint are the drugs they take. The medications are so darn expensive. And, you know, if you're in the wrong plan, it can cost you a lot of money. All right. So let's let you know, let, let's talk about all the different types of coverage and we'll get back to the the cost of the drug plans, because I, I did read a little bit about some. There's now some caps on that. So I'm interested in talking a little bit more about that. So, and of course, like you mentioned before, you, you see it on TV, AARP. They, there's always these ads for Medicare supplement plans, but there's what is a Medicare supplement and then a Medicare Advantage plan. What's the differences? Yeah, so you have what's called a Medicare Advantage plan. Sometimes they'll call it Part C. Those plans are administered by a private insurance company, and they're basically the gatekeepers. So all your claims and all are going to go through them, and you may need prior authorization. Maybe they'll deny your claim because it's administered by a private company. And they typically have very low monthly premiums or almost zero per month. But you typically held to a network, and you have to stay within that network, which is usually what a lot of people have when they're working. You know, you have certain doctors and hospitals that you have to stick around in. A Medicare supplement plan or a Medigap plan mimics Medicare. So basically it follows what Medicare guidelines are. Depending on your state, the premiums could be fairly high, but it allows you to go to any doctor, any hospital that takes Medicare. So it gives you a broader base 
and you don't have to really worry about is this test going to be approved if medic if it's a test that medicare approves it's covered but it's got a high monthly premium and so mm -hmm. you have to take that into account and also you then need to get a separate drug plan in addition to that we're on a medicare advantage or part c the drugs are usually under your doctors hospitals and drugs are under one umbrella so why don't you walk, walk, walk me through kind of a, a a case study. Somebody comes to you and they say, Craig, I'm turning 65 in two months. I know I have to do something, but I'm not sure what, what, what to do. What are some of the questions that you would you would ask to kind of uncover what they want to, or what, or what they should be doing? Right. So the first question is, do you have coverage from your employer or does your significant other have coverage? Um, you know, a lot of people, if you're in unions, a lot of times union benefits may carry over to your retirement. So it's always good to check with the HR department to say, hey, you know, when I retire, do I still have benefits? Right. Unions, teachers, I guess. Yeah. Union teachers, cops, firemen, you know, mm -hmm. there's, a, you know, it's a long list because sometimes when you leave that union coverage, you can never get it back. So it's always good to, to make sure that that's that's taken care of. But I say to people, all right, well, when are you turning 65? And also, we'd like to go over who your doctors are that you go to on a regular basis, not the doctor that you go to every five years, what medications that you take on a regular basis, and what hospitals that if you had to go to. Then we can then dive into the plans individually, and we can explore which Advantage plans work for your situation or which Medicare supplement plans work for your situation. There are some people who are having treatment for some serious illnesses. And, you know, maybe the Medicare supplement plan might be the right thing because the doctor they may want to see may not be in New York or Florida. Maybe they're in Ohio, you know. Um, so these are the things you want to take into consideration. And, of course, some people might want a specific plan, but it may not be in their budget. Mm. You know, I don't want to see somebody have to choose between you know, buying food and paying for their health insurance. So, so there's really two things then. So you, you really want to kind of know, do you want to be able to use any doctors that accept Medicare or do you want to be limited to what the doctors are in this plan and comparing that to the costs of the, the costs of the two, correct? Yeah. And most, if you live in a major city, you know, there are some really good Medicare Advantage plans. And most people, as I said, are accustomed to having to use doctors in network and things like that, because that's what they had their whole work career. So it's nothing unusual. Um, but most of the time, you know, you could find some really benefit rich plans that suit your needs on Medicare Advantage plans as well. So would you say there's most of your clients do Medicare Advantage plans or most do the Medicare supplement or it kind of varies? It varies, but right now, Medicare Advantage plans are definitely the largest growing sector because people say, okay, well, I have to give Uncle Sam the Part B, depending on your income. Right now, the lowest amount that the government's going to get from you is $174.70 from your paycheck. If you were a higher wage earner, that number goes up and mm -hmm. it goes up substantially. So people start adding up the numbers and they're like, wait a minute, it's going to cost me how much between the government and the plan? No way. Then, then that's when the Medicare Advantage plans really start to be appealing. But it is the largest growing sector of the marketplace. Because, Larry, you know, Medicare doesn't cover hearing, vision, dental, and long-term care. Mm -hmm. The Advantage plans or the Part Cs, they offer you gym memberships, over-the-counter benefits. They All those ancillary items sometimes are built into the plans, which are appealing to people. Right. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation where so many people think that Medicare covers long-term care, but yeah. that's a whole, that's a whole nother podcast in, in, in and of itself. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the drugs and the drug costs, because uh, I, I mean, I've been watching this. I know president Biden talked about it in his, in his um, um, uh, speech this year. So that's been, I guess, one of the biggest problems with the Medicare supplements that people, especially people that have, illnesses, cancer, significant illnesses, the cost of those drugs are just could be astronomical. So I believe they have a cap now for this year and then even a lower cap for next year for the for the drug outlay. Yeah. So that's the biggest concern. So they've lowered it and, you know, they are trying to put a cap on a lot of medications. 
you know, like Eloquist is a drug that is really prescribed to a lot of people. And it's probably one of the most expensive drugs on Medicare, you know, but if you could put a cap on the drug cost, because, you know, there's some medications that can cost you, you know, four or $5,000 a year, which is a lot of money just to, to, to get your medications. So the Biden administration, it's all the administrations are really saying, you know, we have to get this under control because that's the largest cost. But then the question is, if you put a cap on it, do the insurance companies just raise your premiums? <laughs> you know? So you got to always take that into consideration. Right. But I think the cap for this year may be oh, your overall drug cap, like $2,000. Is that like really? 3, yeah. Well, 3, I'm sorry. 3,000. 3,000 for this year. And then it's going down in 2025. Correct. Which is a great thing because, you know, unfortunately, somebody like you're saying cancer medication and stuff like that are really, really expensive. And it's, you know, I speak to so many people that they did, they can't afford the care that they need because they have to sacrifice other things. And um, it's a sad conversation sometimes. Yeah. So, um, I mean, one, one other thing is you, you now just, you now turn 65, you go ahead, you select one of these plans and then you realize, uh oh, this plan isn't right for me. Am I stuck with this plan forever? No. So what's nice about Medicare is between October 15th and December 7th of every year, it's called an annual enrollment period. So what we do with our clients is we review every client situation. And if nothing has changed, then you leave the plans as is and you stay the course. But if something has changed, we'll look at that and uh, review our options. And then you can make a change between October 15th and December 7th. The new plan won't start until January, but every year. You know, with any insurance, you should look at it. And if you need to make changes, we make changes. If not, you just leave it alone and it'll renew automatically. Right. So it's not one, it's not one and done. Um, you know, the the obviously the part A part A is, but the 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 drug and the doctors could be changed every every year. So I guess on an ongoing basis, things change in their situation, um, in the type of policies that are out there that yeah. could change too. When, what about if you move from one state to the to the other? I know this is a national program, but the the, the actual plans are offered by state, correct? So a Medicare supplement plan travels with the individual. So if you got it in New York and you went to Florida, you can just keep the plan. Medicare Advantage plans or Part C are definitely more area based. So like in Nassau County, you know, or Suffolk County, the plans could be different. You know, in Palm Beach County or Broward County in Florida, the plans could be different. So if you move from, say, New York to, to Florida, first of all, you need to change your information with Social Security. And then once that's done, then we would have to look at the plans available in your area and change those plans. And you could only change those once a year. So if you move in the beginning of the year, could you change it or are you stuck with that plan until the open enrollment period? Yeah, well, there's what they call special election periods. So moving from one zip code to another zip code, which is outside your plans area, automatically qualifies you the opportunity to make a change. So and you if you're October. and it and if you're kind of a snowbird where you spend half the year in the north and half the year in the south, I guess then for that it probably a Medicare supplement plan may be a better alternative. No, because there are Medicare Advantage plans that will cover you in New York, will cover you in Florida. They cover you in multiple states. They have each company calls it their own name, but it gives you the opportunity to use it for six to 12 months in that particular state. So you don't have to change anything. Ah, great. Yeah, um, which it, is important. Yep. No, this is all great information. Any kind of final words um, or anything else on Medicare that we haven't talked about that you like, think the audience would get an interest of? Yeah, it's important that you speak to somebody that can represent all the plans in your area. If you call just the number you see on the commercial from the carrier, they're typically just going to represent their plan. And they're not going to talk to you about the competition because they don't want you to sign up with them. So it's always good to speak to somebody because it's unbiased. You know, we get compensated from the insurance company. It doesn't cost you any more to work with a local agent. And they'll review all the plans in your area instead of just focusing on one plan. Mm, great, great, great advice. So, Craig, if somebody wants to reach out to you, needs to reach out to you, where is the best way that they can contact you? 
Yeah, they can call me uh, or text me at 917-740-1895, or they can send us an email to Craig Smith at csmedicare.net. And of course, you can find us online at csmithinsurance.com. But just Google Craig Smith Insurance Group and you'll find us as well. Great, Craig, that's great. Craig, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been uh, very valuable information. I know with all of our clients that are going to be turning 65 in the next few months, uh, we're going to send them out this podcast. So they'll have the podcast, uh, but we'll also send them out, uh, you know, contact information and we'll have some conversations with them well in advance. So they make sure that they get the best possible solution for themselves. And if anyone needs to reach out to us as far as financial planning and investment management, they can reach us at 631-248-3600 or just go right to our website, hellowealthmanagement.com, and you can click on the schedule a call and one of our certified financial planners will gladly speak to you. So, uh, so Craig, thanks again. And I'm Larry Heller for Hello Wealth Management. Thanks, Larry. Take care. 